First of all, I would like to thank you very much for taking this invite and join me for this crazy uh, project that we just started uh, due to the lockdown and uh, and um, yeah, and uh, due to this uh, corona coronavirus thing that kind of made us bring new uh, new activities to keep uh, everybody kind of entertained and and well as well as taking the advantage of uh, trying to educate in in another way so thanks thank you very much for not hesitating to accept it uh, even though if it was a it's a real pleasure i know you for for long and i know how uh, uh, effective you are in uh, coaching education and it's part of my job also to uh, to talk to people and to try to share some uh, information with them. Thank and you. Thank you very much. Brown has been a very important part of my life, so I'm very happy to be with you. Thank you very much. And uh, actually, it's, uh, I'm, I'm extremely proud to have you on board because um, I don't think I know someone who has as many papers as, as you have or, or the high impact you have in, in terms of physiology of a sport. And since I'm really, really, I'm, I consider myself a, a freak of uh, physiology and uh, I'm really, really passionate about that. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a real honor to have you uh, on board. So I'm, I, I'm kind of, also this talk is also challenging myself because, uh, well, in, somehow you are like, in, in terms of football, will be my Cristiano Ronaldo or Messi. So <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit there. Uh, struggling with with this situation so you know let's uh, see how it goes the, the the current situation with the lockdown clearly show that uh, the more we work on one topic the less we know and <laughs> I've, been, I've been working on uh, in uh, on hypoxic altitude training and on uh, like aerobic training for now uh, almost 30 years and i still believe that we there are many things there are much more things that i will never know than the little I know uh, so far. Yeah, and I'm happy you said that because this is actually a sentence I used to use, especially when I'm delivering the level one or the level two coaching courses. As one, I always say that the more I know uh, or the more I read, the less I think I know. So it's, uh, when I started in this uh, world of coaching, I thought I knew a lot. Then I started reading and studying and everything. I realized I knew very little and the more I do I do read and I do research I still have okay I think my knowledge has increased but my my doubts and my questions and and uh, the questioning yeah can you hear me now oh no. I didn't hear you very well so sorry I met I missed the last uh, part okay can you hear me now so well, one second we'll try to I'll try to reconnect again can you hear me now Oh, yeah, it's okay. It's better now. It's okay, better. it's better now. Yeah. Now, I, I was saying, yeah, the more we read or the more we research, then uh, it's the, the more questions and, and, and doubts we have about that. So, first of all, I would like to introduce, introduce you a little bit uh, for those that I don't think any of, of the audience we are having or, or the, the coaches that are on board listening to this chat don't, don't really know you. But uh, for those that don't, uh, Gregoire Millet is professor of exercise physiology at the University of uh, Lausanne, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, well, uh, when I was discussing with some of my colleagues that I was going to have you on this coffee talk, I said, uh, you know who I'm, I'm having next week? I have uh, Millet at all. <laughs> because for me, <laughs> this is what, you know, when I was uh, studying, the way I used to reference you until I met you. So, uh, because you have published over 400 articles, um, then it's like uh, 40 chapters of books, four books, and uh, and uh, well, uh, your your experience is is uh, very huge in terms of uh, of research and and education as well. In addition, you also you've been also working in uh, French Triathlon Federation, uh, Hong Kong, Qatar, and uh, UK, and I don't know if I miss any of the yeah of the countries you've been working at so i'm happy i'm sorry i'm happy that you mentioned the head hole because uh first as a coach and then as a academic uh, it's very important to remember that we always work as part of a group 
And uh, I think one of the most uh, valuable uh, lesson I got from my coaching career, uh, moving to my academic career, was that I can be successful only if my teammates are also successful. So I'm very proud to have been, I hope, uh, a bit influential with uh, some athletes and also later on with some uh, PhD students. And I... it's, possible, it's impossible to um, succeed both in elite sport or in science uh, without having with us some uh, very strong and talented people. And part of the talent probably in, the, in life is uh, to find the um, most uh, talented people to work with. Definitely, definitely. Uh, there is a, I think it's an African uh, quote. If you want to uh, go faster, go alone. But if you want to go far, then go with people, no? It's kind of, actually, uh, I'm not sure if, if it's the right quote, but kind of. Talent identification is a very hot topic in sport, but I think it, it is also a hot topic in, in any uh, area, in, uh, and especially in science. De definitely, and it is. And I'm... Um, Every time we, develop, we deliver courses, I always say that the federations are really, really uh, like they're putting a lot of, of, uh, of resources and, and budgets trying to identify talents in the sport. But to me, what really, really matters is to identify also talents as a coaches. And there are many of them because those are the ones that are going to um, level up the level of the federations. It's not only about the elites, it's about the people you have working with you and your, your surroundings. So definitely, yeah. it's, I think it's key for any aspect of your life to have a strong multidisciplinary uh, team. Yeah, <laughs> I've, uh, I've been uh, working with many coaches in, the, in my life, you know, and I'm a bit old now, so I've, I've got uh, uh, some experience. And definitely for me in sport, the most uh, important uh, people are the coaches. Because mm -hmm. uh, they are the one who knows, who was supposed to know everything about the process to produce performance. The athlete, the, the uh, administrator, uh, they have to run a team of a specialist and it's impossible to be world level uh, in any area. Uh, I've been lucky to work with a, a very, very good coach uh, when I was working in Qatar. Carlos Cavallero is a... Uh, this, he is a distance coach. He's now heading the sports science department at the Brazil Olympic Committee. And he was a perfect example of somebody with some interest in science, but who was able to bring together a big group of experts, you know, like in physiology, biomechanics, psychology, nutrition. And uh, he was very successful uh, in that way. I think it's, uh, it's key, and uh, this is one of the barriers I'm trying to break, actually, with this kind of toffee call, toffee, uh, coffee talks or live chat, because the, the research, it only shows uh, results that have been performed in a lab environment or in a really, really uh, control group or, or, or like in a really, in a more closed, let's say, conditions. But when it comes to the track, then it's a huge difference between what you can do or, what, or how you can interpret the, the yeah. data you read from a, a, an article, etc. And that leads me to, um, I think, was uh, the introduction you used in Alicante the first time I met you, like 10 years ago. The, the, I, I don't know if I can uh, re recall it properly, but it was something like the scientific, what you said uh, was the scientific training does not exist because in the field of play, you don't have the same conditions to strictly apply the scientific methodology. But however, scientific knowledge will help us to make or to take better decisions. Yeah. And uh, I, I kind of took this quote, um, you know, through the, the last 10 years since uh, I met you in, in Alicante. And part of this, uh, all the events I'm doing and all the, the education I'm trying to apply, it's aimed to bridge this, the gap between, okay, what you can read on an article and then how you can bring it to the, to the truck, to the swimming pool or to your environment, no matter what, what is. So how do you think triathlon can benefit from, from the science itself? 
Uh, yeah, I think uh, it's very true that uh, one of my strong beliefs is that scientific training does not exist. And as you mentioned it, I have a lecture in, uh, in master where I restart with this sentence. And then I t I, I'm telling the students, okay, if you're disappointed, you can leave now. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, uh, since knowledge is really improving at a very fast pace, without any scientific background, and I don't want to, um, uh, I'm sure that very good coaches can uh, be successful without the scientific background, but they have, they need to have the ability to be surrounded with good experts. And scientific background, I think really helps to uh, choose the people you have to work with and to make sure that you don't make the wrong decision. You don't have to be world level physiologist, world level biomechanist, world, and it's impossible by the way, mm. to be good in everything, but you need to have some methodology, some way of thinking that will be uh, helpful to make sure that you are choosing the right people to work with. Some very good example are in triathlon. I think uh, I'm very impressed uh, in many ways by the Norwegian uh, sports system. And uh, they are doing well uh, in many sports. It's a small country, they are doing well in many sports. And I think they are doing well uh, also, not just because, but also because they have a very good use of some uh, scientific support. We are not talking about uh, providing uh, knowledge. We are, we are talking about providing support first to the athletes and maybe also to the coach. Keep in mind, the coach is always the guy who has to take the last decision. And yeah. he needs the help. Definitely. And uh, Ari is, uh, is listening to the conversation. So it, uh, actually, um, I'm not afraid of sharing what he already shared in one of these live talks. And uh, he definitely, well, he said, he has a really, really strong multidisciplinary team. But at the end of the day, he's the last one taking the decisions. But all the decisions he takes are based on all the feedback and inputs gathered from the entire team around. So he said, I'm not an expert on physiology, but uh, when I prescribe the training, I go to the physiologist and ask, is this too much? Is this too little? So yeah. then it is it, what, what I said, the, the, this kind of feedback helps him backing up the decisions they're going to take and what well, the results are there. So. And, and the, the system has to be flexible enough that uh, it makes possible to change from uh, uh, the, the different uh, uh, type of support that we need. I think for long, you know, like uh, UK was a very good example too. They put a lot of resource in the uh, English Institute of Sport yeah. and it has been successful in many, many sports because keep in mind that across the sports, there are many, many similarity. Obviously, triathlon has its own specificity, but you have many similarity. The, the type of question you will have in triathlon will be maybe at 60 or 70 percent the same that somebody who will be in cross-country ski or, mm -hmm. or even uh, it's uh, always uh, surprising for me to see um, how much uh, in uh, common like a team, a team sports coach could have with the endurance sports coach. Many things are very uh, similar, you know. We can discuss the main issue, the main topic, the hot topic in the sports yeah. science. But the hot topic in sports science, since I'm talking about group versus individu individu uh, individualization individualization versus group training, if we are talking about environmental physiology, how do you use altitude, heat, cold? If I'm talking about how you monitor and try to limit the development of fatigue. If you are talking about uh, uh, like aerobic versus strength, you know, ob obviously any sport will have to take his own decision and every team has to take his own decision. But this issue, just to mention a few of them, are important for anyone. Yeah. Any athletes and coaches involved in elite sport have to take into account and to think about fatigue, about environmental physiology, about strength, like uh, concurrent training, strength, aerobic, and so on and so on. Yeah, definitely. I, when I de deliver the courses, no matter if it's a level one or level two, uh, I always emphasize on the same, that knowledge is free. You don't need a huge budget to actually access to 
okay, it's not free uh, completely because if you need to purchase a book, but this is something, you know, quite affordable. So there is not, there is not excuses to not take decisions, you know, uh, based on the science, or, or, or there are not excuses to do not use the sports science knowledge in any environment, no matter if you are in the middle of Africa or if you are in the most advanced lab uh, everywhere, because it's, it's, it's something affordable, no matter what, uh, what is your, your budget. So for this kind of new practice that uh, are emerging, you know, the, the training, the testing and uh, the technology and et cetera, et cetera, um, how, how do you see the importance of the sports science as, a, as a one of the parameters uh, to be yeah. integrated in the culture education, et cetera, et cetera? I think it's, uh, it's very, very important, but the sports science has to be uh, provided in a, in a valuable way. In a, you know, it's not always relevant. There are many examples that some scientific concept can uh, be a limitation in the development of culture of, of athletes. If a scientific knowledge is wrong, and there are in history many examples that, that we can discuss later on, it could be more um, a flow or uh, something that will uh, break or stop the development of knowledge. Uh, it is very important that the people who are uh, talking about sports science have some experience also as practitioners. doesn't mean that they have to be uh, in the past uh, world champion, Olympic champion, and so on, but at least to understand that the needs of athletes and coaches are very uh, special. We are talking about, uh, about small groups of special people yeah. with very special commitment, special uh, way of assess themselves, of uh, social, uh, you know, talking uh, between themselves and uh, having a very special life. You know, and uh, if you don't uh, understand that, it's very difficult that you can uh, speak to them. I'm a very, I'm a strong believer that science can no be, cannot be prescriptive. It's not science. We will tell you just from A to B how to do that. But without science, I don't think you can have a very long and successful career. Oh, yeah. Yeah. An elite, an elite uh, coach is somebody who has had many world level results with different athletes because you can be lucky to have only one yeah. so talented that uh, no matter what you do it's gonna be good but um if you want to be successful and have the respect of the people of your your peers you know like uh, it's very important to have the respect also of the other coaches it means that uh, you have some value you have some you have the ethical behavior and you have the knowledge yeah, definitely. And it's, it's, uh, I would like to share this with you because uh, I think it was important to me the first time I, I, I brought the nutritionist I'm working with to one of the high altitude training camps. And we both were climbing up with the bike with a, uh, with a really, really, I mean, for our level, but we were going like full gas. And then he, he was cursing, like, you know, on himself saying, saying, okay, now you, you are not. Uh, able to breathe, and your nutritionist come and say, now you need to eat, to eat 90 grams of uh, carbohydrates or, or whatever, you know. So for him, it was also a, a good uh, experience to go through what the athletes are going through, regardless of the level, in order to then ask them to do something that you know is not possible. So uh, that's actually is reflecting on, on what you said. Uh, you don't need to run like three kilometers per hour to have kind of experience of what this intensity means. So you yeah. just need to go at your own intensity, but, and, and then experience it before you, uh, you prescribe anything, because it's not only what it comes on the, on, on the books.